The plans for the Paul Sellers plywood workbench call for legs made of, well, plywood. But I deviated from the plan a bit and used 2x4 framing timber for the legs and plywood for the rails. Thusly, this necessitated the cutting of mortise holes. The bench leg stock came from two 6 meter sticks of 2x4, which is the standard length in New Zealand. It's cut in half at the store and cut down further at home before planing and gluing up. I trim and hand plane down to get two sides super flat and then run the legs through the planer again to end up with four legs at 80 by 80 millimeters square. I've got my four legs cut down and milled to around 80 millimeters square and I've got my bottom rails and I just have to cut uh, away some of the length here to leave the tenon protruding through enough to go through the mortise hole which I'll cut into these legs here. out of that one. Uh, I've got a piece here that's big enough for one of them. So I'm completely out of 18 mil boards so I've made the executive decision to use this piece of 12 mil. It's long enough and uh, it's wide enough. That piece there is 12 mil and the rest is 18 mil and I managed to get that all from scrap which is great. That's the advantage of being the boss, eh? Just make executive decisions like that. Just got the rails out of the clamps from the glue up and come out really nice, but uh, inevitably you get these little uh, offsets here where it's slipped during clamping and whatnot. And the, uh, the squeeze out. So I want to run that through the table saw. So now that I have just a normal flat straight surface I can take this little fence thing off and just do it the normal way. Right I'm up to the uh, probably one of the most critical parts of the build here. I've got my plans and I've got my pairs of legs and I've got my lower rails, the upper rails are still outside and anyway I'm going to mark out the bottom rail mortise now and this is really a part of the build that I can't screw up so it's not experimental like it was on my other video. This set of legs and you probably can't see it but that tenon down there, that mortise and tenon kind of worked okay but uh, it was the first one I'd ever done and yeah it wasn't that awesome. This one has to be at least has to be at least medium awesome. Yeah! That's the wrong face. Look at that, man! It's so beautiful! So beautiful! 
now, that looks about right to me. And now I have to use this one. To get it in the center. So I'm just using the calipers to position the uh, scrap here, piece of scrap here in the middle. Need to go out about another quarter of a mil. That's just right. Put a little nick on my mark here. And that's where I want to set my point to. that nice and tight mark the point on the other side and I just want to verify with the knife that that's correct and it does appear to be correct and I can mark the uh, sides of this mortise hole use a knife to join them up Does that show up? Yes, it does. See, my knife line is inside my pencil line, and that's because, because of the, uh, I don't know, I guess you would call that a parallax error or something. Conical shape of the tip of the pencil means that its marking point is somewhat offset from the uh, origin of the marking surface whereas when you're using a sharp knife it's right on the marking surface itself okay there she is marked out so now I have four big through mortises to cut I did the first one with hand tools, chisels and a rubber mallet. And I wanted to do it this way because I wanted to get some of that Paul Sellers hand tool vibe goodness in me. But for the other three I drilled and routed out as much as I could before chiseling just to save time. Even so, cutting these mortises took hours of hard labor. It was really tough. The top mortises were way, 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 way easier because they're open at the top and I was able to cut most of them with the table saw, cutting up to the line as far as the blade would go and using a stop clamped to the fence to prevent cutting too far. I'm putting a bullnose roundover on the protruding part of the tenon on the lower rail now. So to do that, I just line it up there and uh, chuck a light pencil line on so I know where to stop rounding over.
Mmm. Mmm. I've got a bunch of strips of plywood here, 12 mil thick. They're 80 mil wide. And I'm going to glue up three layers of, or well, two lots of three layers. And uh, could be a bit creative with this one here. Uh, there's a piece missing. So I'll just put in a, a bit of a wedge there to uh, fill that gap. And these are going to be the bearers on top of the legs that will go across here and I'll cut them to length. And that's where the bench assembly will sit on top. So I'll glue these up now, it's uh, about 8 o'clock at night. And I'm going to get these glued up and cut down tomorrow. And I'll do a bit of sanding on the uh, the lead components and glue them up tomorrow and get them done. After that it'll be a matter of attaching these bearers and then I'll be ready for the top to go on finally, which is really exciting for me. Been putting a lot of work into this thing so it's great to see it. Coming together, finally, I'm going to celebrate prematurely, but nevertheless. kids that I want to have, huh? If you're still watching now, a big thanks from me for, for sticking around this far, but uh, I'm getting near the end. I've just put together the, uh, the legs, put the, uh, the bearers on top of the legs, and this build, I hope uh, I've portrayed uh, what it has taken me to get to this point. Uh, I'm pretty happy now, and I've got my confidence about me, about this thing. Yeah. Super, super excited about this. <laughs>